And uh, so tonight we're going to start another one. But instead of working in just one book and through some verses, we're going to look at the Bible and some of the things in which it says. And the title of this uh, series that we're going to do is The Seven Things the Devil Doesn't Want Us to Do. And uh, so before we get into this, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just lay this study here at your feet, Lord. And Father, as we work through this, Lord, I just pray, Father, that you could allow it to touch our hearts in a different way than we've ever been touched before. Father, teach us something new. Teach us something fresh. Father, may no one see or hear me, Father, but they see and hear you. Father, I pray that you would change us. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you have your Bibles, uh, turn to Hebrews chapter 10. And uh, if you don't have one, grab one in front of you. But Hebrews chapter 10. And the title, uh, one of the things about this is, he doesn't want us to go to church. And to, tonight, we're going to look at the part about he doesn't want us to go to church. That's one thing the devil doesn't want. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. I mean, 25. I mean, Hebrews 10, 25. Not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now, one of the things that the devil you say, why does he not want us to go to church? Why does the devil not want us to come together with other believers? And there's some things that take place inside of the church. Now, that church doesn't have to be a, a building that has a steeple. It can be in someone's living room. It can be where a group of believers come together in one heart, one unity, and studying the Word of God. And But... When we look at this verse, it tells us not to neglect the meeting together. Now, there was a time that I, I was preaching a sermon, and I was preaching on this verse, and some people thought I was telling them they was going to hell because they didn't come to church. Do not neglect what I just said. I'm not telling you if you miss church, you're going to hell. I am not saying that. But I am saying the Word of God says, don't get in a habit of missing to come together with believers. Because the scripture says that, that we can't neglect that. We can't fall into that trap. Because guess what? That's what Satan wants us to do. He wants us to fall into that trap of not meeting together. He wants, us, wants it to become a habit that we don't come together. But some of the things that are happening when we come together and we look at this verse, it says, encouraging one another. Guess what happens through the week? We get discouraged. We get disappointed. Life happens. But guess what happens when we come together as believers? We lift one another up. We encourage one another to press on to be what God's called us to be. And that is one of the reasons why Satan doesn't want us to come together. And, and he talks about, and all the more as the day draws near. You see, as the time comes that we're not going to be here, you know, the end of time, guess what? Life is going to become more and more busier because Satan wants us to become more and more busier to make excuses of why we don't meet together, why we don't need that encouragement. And guess what happens? We fall into a trap of what he wants instead of what the Lord wants. Now, think about this. I want to share with you three things that happen that Satan knows. He knows what happens at church. We looked at that verse in Hebrews 10, 25. I just went through it with you. But I want to share three more things with you that happens at church. The first thing that happens is God's Word is preached. That is one, another thing why Satan doesn't want us to come to church. Because the Word of God is being preached. And guess what is sharper than any double-edged sword that can pierce even to the marrow of our bones? The Word of God. Not the preacher. Not the music person, not the youth person, not the person in whom does, does this or that, but the Word of God can penetrate a heart and can change a heart like that. And Satan 
knows that. And when Satan knows he has a heart, he is afraid that the Word of God may penetrate it. He's afraid that the Word of God may change it because he knows the Word of God will be preached at a church. A second thing that I want you to catch, Holy Spirit convicts. Now, the Holy Spirit can convict us anywhere, any time of the day, even at night when you're asleep. I'm going to confess for you right now, there's been times I've been sound asleep And I woke up from my sleep and the Spirit of God was convicting me so bad, I had to get on my knees and repent. But guess what happens when we come to church? When the Word of God is being preached, when God is being worshipped, the Spirit starts flowing. And as the Spirit is flowing, the Spirit convicts of sin. And Satan knows that. And he says, hey, If I can keep these people from that place, from being in that environment, hearing the Word of God, experiencing that worship, the Spirit may not flow and they may not experience that Spirit moving and their lives may stay controlled by Satan instead of by the Lord. The third thing, we need encouragement. And encouragement is found at church. And Satan knows one of his biggest tools that he uses is he uses discouragement to beat us down, to take our eyes off the cross, to to cause us not to press on. So one of the things that Satan doesn't want you or me to do is come to church. So my challenge to you tonight, don't allow Satan to put the traps around you that you will make excuses of not being a part of the family of Christ. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And Father, uh, 